So I was really looking forward to meet you all in real life, but uh, here we are. I'm sure I met some of you uh, that are online now, but uh, certainly not all of you. And having this said, I really hope that we can start meeting again during next year. I can't see, of course, who is attending, but I still would like to think that we are a good mix of uh, individuals in the industry representing manufacturers, logistic companies, solution providers and system integrators. And in, irrespective of our professional background, we are all consumers and increasingly more demanding when it comes to wood delivery and brand authentication. I have been in the auto ID industry for over 30 years now, providing solutions that helps improve visibility in supply chain and transportation. Uh, most of them have been based on barcodes and some including RFID. And I joined Avery Dennison about two years ago as a market and business development manager for RFID. And I'm quite passionate about the opportunity to be taking part of the industry, taking it to the next level. And I will discuss today how supply chain processes can be improved to meet the new normal. And during our session today, I would like you to consider three questions. And the first one, in your experience, where in your processes or solutions do you see the need for additional visibility? And the second question, where does it go wrong today? And at what stage would improve visibility prevent or help manage uh, exceptions more efficiently? If you do have sufficient, and this is the question number three, if you do have sufficient visibility already, how would a technology that provides that or same accuracy help a technology that could even remove manual processes and optimize the use of your people resources? So visibility enables transparency downstream in the supply chain, and I will show how and where this can be adopted. So this is a simplified view of the supply chain. You see raw material parts and semi-finished goods coming in at the far left into production processes, warehouse management, generating an outgoing product that finally reach a cust customer or consumer. And to get full visibility and traceability, basically all incoming and outgoing goods has to be tracked in each step of the way. And these recurring processes can easily be automated with the use of RFID with close to 100% accuracy. Processes that at large are manual and labor intensive today without RFID and often at lower accuracy. So fixed RFID readers and antennas can automatically capture everything that passes a given position or in, in the defined space or area. Uh, and this also provides full benefits in the factories, warehousing and inventory management. So tracking work in progress and knowing where the assets and the inventory is located during manufacturing is an, a key, of course, to get end-to-end end -end visibility and traceability. And this is really where it starts. So for customers uh, and users like you and I, uh, RFID is an enabler providing the key tracking information to the logistics systems. Uh, we all want to know where our product comes from and be reassured that they are authentic and from a safe source. We also would like to see that the environmental impact is reduced to a minimum. So RFID can drive efficiencies across the whole supply chain. And with the rise of e-commerce and matching omni strategies, uh, we must have full visibility on the inventories. So RFID also helps reduce packing errors. Automated pallet bid verification can highlight and reduce shipping errors. Errors that are very costly when delivered to the end customer. Not just in wasted money, but also in bad customer experience and increased environmental impact. So Advanced accurate shipping notifications can help the involved parties to plan ahead and avoid surprises in the deliveries.
So 2020, this is a year that we will all remember for sure. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 is huge and in our daily lives and have forced us into a new normal. This also has a huge impact on the supply chain and logistics, of course. E-commerce is the preferred choice for many of us. Globalization is under threat. Trade wars, lockdowns and vulnerability in the supply chain has shown the vulnerability and the unexpected is driving digitization and automation. Simply put, supply chains and warehousing is not designed for the current reality. So most warehouses are run manually with labor intensive processes that makes them inflexible and vulnerable. So even if e-commerce over the last 20 past years have forced faster more of our distribution networks and micro warehousing, 2020 has pushed us many years ahead of the normal curve, I think. We are seeing supply and demand issues coming from global partners, including labor shortages. And the demand changes are huge and the ability to quickly adopt to new requirements will be crucial going forward. So we see actually four major pressures on the supply chain that puts focus on capacity, accuracy, speed and labor efficiency. The ability to increase capacity without sacrificing the accuracy isn't easy when already running at maximum throughput. A manual process is insufficient visibility and poor accuracy of data generates costly errors, of course. Automated capture of inventory and tracking data is key here. The people resources can be freed up to handle exceptions in a more informed way and uh, improve where it's needed. So bottom line is that process need to be automated. So with these challenges mentioned, how can technology help when applying Internet of Things to the supply chain? What is missing? So at the top here, you see the supply chain again, starting with the raw materials being manufactured into finished goods and finally delivered to consumers like you and I. Now, if we could accurately track the goods as they flow through the supply chain, then we could even better manage the challenges that e-commerce, globalization and even pandemic brings. So by applying Internet of Things to the supply chain, we can provide this visibility but we need to do it with accuracy and in real time. And this is the important thing. So how does IoT apply to the supply chain looks like today? Well, in this simplistic view, the internet aspect would be the logistic systems that will manage the movement of things themselves. And at the bottom, you see the things. So for logistic systems, we talk about the ERPs, the MES, the WMS and so on. And the logos you see here are just a few examples of these systems. So in recent years, these logistic systems have been investing big US dollars to enable IoT. They've increased the data capabilities. The processing speeds has been adding visual, visualization towers and even are using artificial intelligence for advanced analytics and automation. In other words, they are all focused on increasing the supply chain visibility and transparency. And at the bottom, we have all the IoT things that we would like to track. It could be pallets as a cross dock operation, parcels at sortation facility, or even consumer items at the fulfillment center. But between the internet and the things is a manual connectivity layer. And this is really where the full promise of the supply chain IoT falls apart, at least today. So as long as we are relying on humans for barcode scans, manual keying inputs, or even pen and papers, we keep on getting costly errors, time consuming delays, and increased inefficiencies. Just think about the additional costs related to recurring uh, cycle count, well times and shipment errors, manually connecting physical goods to these systems. 
and we call this the supply chain IoT gap. So this is where RFID can help. We have replaced the manual layer with automation that provides the visibility, accuracy and speed needed. The traditional barcoded label is now also including a passive UHF RFID inlay that is being added and encoded in the same process as when the non-RFID label was issued and attached. And the pallets or containers in use could have an RFID tag that becomes associated with the items loaded into or onto these means of uh, transport. So altogether this enables automation in the supply chain processes. And existing infrastructure can be updated to increase throughput that currently runs as max maximum capacity and new warehouses can implement this technology from start to become more agile and meet the growing needs. So where do we need to start then? Do we need to tag everything with RFID? Well, our view is that all items will have a digital identity eventually, and this is the end game. In the meantime, we see RFID being deployed in retail, food, pharma, healthcare, and so on. More and more items are being RFID enabled. And this allows us to benefit from the fact that these items are now being automatically visible as they flow through the supply chain where RFID readers are deployed. Adding an RFID label to a pallet or a carton instead of just the traditional barcode label will have immediate improvements for verification of shipments and downstream processes. So each level of identification has its own benefits, of course. So industry standard GS1 guidelines for RFID use the same principle of marrying item level to carton level to pallet to manage the goods. Connecting items to carton level will provide the traceability you're looking for in deliveries and in the case of recall and connecting cartons to pallet level helps remove manual scanning at loading base and docking doors, allowing automated validation of the right pallet with the right contents going into the right track. So just a few words about RFID versus barcodes and why RFID enables automated visibility. If you look at this wall of boxes, RFID labeled inventory can be captured without having line of sight or access to the label. But in fact, in this view, there are no labels visible. The labels could be on one or the other side, of course, printed with barcodes and human readables as before, but now also including an RFID inlay. So implementing RFID is straightforward as this RFID label can be printed and encoded at the same time. So there's no changes to the current business logics. And the barcode and human readables, they are still there for any rare exception handling that requires manual intervention. So doing the inventory scanning based on barcodes in this case would have required inefficient manual labor where boxes even have to be moved physically. So as we saw in the previous uh, view, RFID can control inventory in a defined space in real time. So what if you have or you want to track items in a manufacturing or delivery flow? Well, it's the same principle. And in this case, item passes checkpoints equipped with RFID antennas, where the read rate is close to 100% without any labor intensive manual processes. And these automated processes really reduce vulnerability as manual processes are simply removed. And the employees can manage the rare exceptions where technology now supports them for quick corrections. So having a technology that also allows a person to find a mission item in a shipping area or knowing where it was recently located also speeds up require, require and reduce waste. So 
RFID can also provide automated visibility in the makeup area and on what goes in or out from a dock door or shipping door. And by adding RFID labels instead of just the barcode label when preparing ship shipment provides immediate benefits and downstreams. So of course it's an advantage to uh, would be preferred to apply RFID at earliest pos possible stage in the supply chain, but benefits are obvious in later stages as well for local improvements. So having this said, it's it's not really all or nothing. RFID can be de deployed in many phases of the logistics supply chain. So in summary, there are many use cases where RFID can provide significant benefits. By applying RFID before shipping, costly errors can be reduced and traceability can be improved. And also having live data allows the system to even plan the delivery routes based on actual traffic situation. The truck load and weight can be optimized. And this is especially valuable in last mile deliveries in, in urban areas. So together, all this leads to reduced waste and carbon footprint. One other obvious uh, use case is for the management of returnable items or RTIs, as we say. By adding a passive UHF RFID labels or tags to the RTIs, the typical 10 to 15% loss of them can be prevented. And also the cleaning processes can be made much more uh, efficient. Uh, there's many manual recur recurring uh, processes, for example, cycle counts, uh, which can be reduced to a minimum, and also spare RTIs can be reduced to a minimum. And on this slide, you see a few different examples of RTIs, and they can all be RFID enabled with durable RFID labels or tags suitable for the specific use case. So the durable labels are often sufficient and can be customized and deployed on demand by standard industrial RFID printers. And tags can be pre-configured and customized and are suitable for application that requires tough cleaning or extreme environmental conditions. And we can also provide in-mold inlays that would then be integrated into the RTIs when these are produced. So as I mentioned in the beginning, sustainability is very much in focus for many consumers and also for companies, of course. And it's clear that supply chain plays an important part. We see that 83% in leadership roles believes that technology will assist in meeting their sustainability objectives. The carbon footprint can be reduced by removing waste, of course, in the logistics processes. So in other words, RFID enables improves in visibility and accuracy at the same time as it increases speed and capacity, which means passive UHF RFID is a cost efficient enabler for a more sustainable supply chain. We have actually seen an increased how the increased visibility and accuracy that RFID brings enables much more sustainable manufacturing and distribution and retail industry, where it's being deployed at large scale now. Manufacturing can right-size inventory and supply, omnichannel logistics and reverse logistics becomes much more efficient when implementing RFID, including reverse deliveries and uh, it also helps minimizing the waste. Please also see our market insight report where you can read more about the imminent digital transformation of our world. Uh, it contains interviews with key global executives from retail, logistic and supply chain that talks about challenges and issues and it's available to download on our website. And uh, finally, just a few words about Avery Dennison, uh, Intelligent Labels, and how we support IoT. 
Together with our partners, we are positioned to address supply chain challenges with our various solutions. We have an industry expertise and products tailored for many industries, including food, beauty, healthcare, aviation, logistics, to name a few. And we invested in global production capability of more than 12 billion inlays per year. And we have a comprehensive product portfolio, including now the Smart Pack, Smart Track brand. So to summarize, digital ID technologies such as RFID enables automation that provides the visibility and transparency needed going forward. At the same time, reducing the impact on the environment. So uh, Avery Dennison is ready to support the industry to implement IoT and, and the industry heading towards 4.0 and 5.0. I also encourage you to visit our virtual booth today uh, and also our product finder uh, where you can see solutions and different use cases and all the relevant product information, of course. And with that, I'm ready to answer the questions that came in this far and take any new that you might have. I also would like to remind you about the three questions I had uh, initially. Did you think about how RFID can address the challenges that you have today? And did you see how RFID can improve current processes? Maybe eliminate manual labor intensive scanning at the same time as you improve the visibility and accuracy. I do hope so and encourage you to join us in our IoT journey that we now have embarked. And thank you for your attention and do not hesitate to reach out directly to me or to any of my colleagues. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Urban, for um, giving us this, this uh, comprehensive overview uh, on supply chains today and for uh, the supply chains tomorrow. And yeah, there are some questions. Um, maybe two or three I will forward to you right now and uh, encourage, of course, as you said, uh, all the um, people in the audience to uh, connect with you directly. But here is one from the, from the audience. Um, how to associate the RTI ID with the ID of content in, in the food industry? Which tech is the best for foot, uh, for wood pellets and for still cages? Yeah, so uh, as you saw at some of uh, one of the slides, we, we have, for example, for steel cages is on metal tags. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when we talk about uh, inlays, uh, what we do is that we, if you like, package them so that they are suitable for the specific use case. So in the case of, a, if it is a metal surface, we mm -hmm. have some uh, distance to the metal that has an impact on, on, on RFID, uh, which makes them work when attached to the metal surface. And mm -hmm. in case of a, a wood pallet, for example, we don't have that um, issue because RFID, is being impacted by, by liquids and with metal. So in, in the palette, we have um, a number of different alternatives uh, where you might need to consider the, the durability more than the, the, the metal aspect of it, because a, a palette would be exposed to, to um, some rough treatment, of course. Uh, and for that purpose, we have other solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, I encourage you to to contact to to make direct contact with us, and we mm -hmm. can advise based on the use case what is best. Mm -hmm. yeah, and maybe from your side, a few words on the on the first part of the question: What is to uh, how to bring together the um, the product ID and the uh, ID of the load carrier? Uh, so, if I understand the question correctly, the 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 load carrier uh, is uh, identified by RFID and you can associate the items that goes on to that one uh, mm -hmm. with, with uh, in, in, in the backend systems, which means that you, you can, in the different uh, track and trace uh, 
positions you you can see the you can see only the the rti or the the palette for example uh, and know what's on it or you can uh, see the palette ID and associate everything that goes on to it in that process. So it's different ways, different layers of um, uh, tagging that I talked about, palette to boxes to items. And of mm. course, if it's a palette with boxes, the palette can have a tag, the boxes can have a tag, and inside the boxes, this could be uh, items that has RFID, and all of them are visible uh, at the same time, basically. And it's up to the backend system to to use this information in, in a smart and intelligent way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I said, also the the, the there are guidelines um, in yeah. GS1 that, yeah. that provides this information and how to do that in in in, in detail. I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. And uh, just look on the clock. Yeah, maybe maybe one one last question for now, and when there are some more, I will forward them to you later. Uh, here's one: uh, What do you, every denizen, I think, uh, do to reduce the wa uh, the waste that results when every object gets a transponder? Yeah, so we have uh, we have uh, initiatives that uh, ongoing that will reduce the the use of plastics, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, th this is very much in focus for us. Uh, at the same time, we also see that the benefits of implementing RFID is such that the waste that one uh, of these inlays can help reduce is relatively big compared to the, the waste that they represent themselves. Okay. So, so we we are both working on both uh, fronts on this side, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But okay. uh, I think it's important to not get, uh, you know, stuck on just one aspect of what waste is and how we can reduce waste in the supply chain by improving the processes and increase mm -hmm. the visibility and so on. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I hope that answers the question. I think so. I think so. Okay, uh, Urban, yeah, for now, thank you very much also for answering uh, the questions here from the chat. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining us here in our forum. Um, and maybe I will come back later to you. I will ask you if you're uh, there and ready to answer some more questions if they pop up here.